The Rams are coming off their bye week, and what in the world is going on in the NFC? And how do the Rams take advantage? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Travis Rogers. Thanks for making us a part of what you do. Not only do I host the Rams pre, half, and post-game show on their flagship station ESPN 710, but I also host the Travis and Sliwa show on that very same ESPN 710. So if you want to take a chance to listen to that, I would very much appreciate it. Of course, we get started on the pregame show two hours before kickoff, which means we got you going at 11 o'clock before the Niners and Rams coming up here in week number eight. We got a good pod scheduled for you today. Can the Rams get to 10 wins? Can anybody in the NFC West get to 10 wins? That's coming up in just a little bit. Christian McCaffrey is in San Francisco. We saw his debut right there. Did the Rams drive the price up? And ultimately, will that benefit Los Angeles? That, too, is just around the corner. But before we do any of it, let me remind you that today's episode of Locked on Rams is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users receive a 100% deposit match. That it's up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Your promo code is locked on. All right. So, what's going on in the NFC? What the, so, if you go back to the beginning of the season when camps opened up, and you would have said, Give me four teams that you feel very, very good about being good in the NFC. I think just about everybody would have had Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and the Rams on your list, right? Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and the Rams are average at best. Green Bay is looking at a four-game losing streak. They go to Buffalo on Sunday night to play on Sunday night football. That will be four in a row for the uh, pack if that doesn't happen. Tampa just went into Carolina. Now, we just saw Carolina out here in Los Angeles against the Rams a couple of weekends ago, and Carolina's terrible. P.J. Walker is their quarterback, didn't push the ball down the field. They were a bad team. They did not look like a team that was going to get anything done. They beat Tom Brady and the Bucs. So the Bucs are reeling. The Bucs were back-to-back. They were double-digit favorites in back-to-back weekends and lost outright. Not didn't cover, didn't win. Didn't win the game full stop. The Rams, of course, we probably know better than anybody around here right there at three and three and really haven't put together a game that makes you feel like they've done anything to get you excited about what's coming up in the second half of the season. Now coming out of the bye you the, and, and the schedule, and we'll talk about that coming up uh, in, in just a little bit, but the Rams have been all over the map. Here are the teams that have been good in the NFC, and, and we saw some of them on the bye this weekend, and we saw some of them continue to win. Philadelphia is the last remaining team in football that has not lost a game. Philly is the last unbeaten, and does it feel like they're not that, that they're you know last unbeaten good? I know it's weird. Say Arizona, I believe was the last team to lose a game last year, and it really doesn't matter. But usually, you have a handful of teams that have zero or one losses. Uh, by the time you get into week six, seven, eight, and they feel like teams that should be in the sewer. Buffalo feels like they're where they're supposed to be. Um, the Dallas Cowboys feel like they're kind of where they're supposed to be uh, relative to the fact that they've only lost to, uh, you know, you, you look at um, the the Philadelphia Eagles a couple of weeks ago and one other loss along the way. This, this is not a bad football team. This is not a team that is a big surprise that they're there because of that great defense. Now, if Dak can get uh, on track and they can start to play offensively the way they or at least get close to what they're doing defensively, that's a pretty good team. But you have two other teams in the NFC that make absolutely no sense. And one of them throws a huge monkey wrench, or about both of them, really. But Seattle in particular, Seattle is in first place in the NFC West through seven weeks of the NFL season. Seattle is in four and three and, com and not comfortably, but they are solo first in the NFC West. 
They are a game ahead of the Rams, who are three and three, half a game ahead of the Rams, a game ahead of the Niners, who are three and four, and a game ahead of the Arizona Cardinals, who are three and four. The Seattle Seahawks were the team that you thought was running up the white flag, that they traded Russell Wilson, they collected a bunch of picks, they're going to have Geno Smith or Drew Lockett be their quarterback this season, and it just felt like this was going to be a team that went, you know, five and 12, maybe six and 11, and really wasn't in the mix all that much. They're in the mix. They just came down here to L.A., beat the Chargers yesterday, and are a pretty darn good team. Now, are they unbeatable? No. Are they the team that I would pick right now to win that division? Probably still no. But what this does is, because everybody's bunched together, because nobody's really separated, because the NFC East is as good as it is with the Eagles and the Cowboys and the Giants, we'll talk about them in just one second coming up, this crowds the field a great deal. So the Rams winning the division, maybe, maybe not, okay? Look at what's going to – Philly is going to either win the division or get a wild card. Dallas is either going to win the division or get a wild card. San, or New York could win that division or get a wild card. Three teams coming out of the NFC East, which means there's just one other wild card available, just one other one to get now – Green Bay, we'll see whether or not they can get on track in that division. Detroit and, and Chicago feel like they're not going to do anything in the north. Minnesota has a comfortable lead right now. Maybe Green Bay gets going. In the south, throw it up for grabs. Somebody's going to win the division and go to the playoffs. Really have a hard time seeing a, uh, a wild card coming out of the south, which brings us to the west. Whoever wins, whether it's Seattle, whether it's San Francisco, maybe the Rams can still grab that division title that's coming up in segment number three that we'll have here in just a bit. But now all of a sudden, you have to get to nine or ten wins to get that wild card team because there are not a bunch of open space right there. This is filling in every single week. It's getting a little bit more clear who's going to be in there. And it feels like nine, ten is that number to maybe stick your nose into wild card contention. Philly's already there. Dallas is already there. The New York Giants are already there. They're already, they don't have to do much to still get to 10, right? They just have to basically play 500 football the rest of the way they get to the 10. The Rams have already basically used whatever equity they had in the bank win-wise to get to three and three, right? They're going to have to be a little bit better than 500 over the last couple of weeks of the season or last couple of months of the season, I should say, to get where they need to go. The NFC is weird because the teams we thought were good are not. Tampa, not good. Green Bay, not good. Uh, the 49ers, they just got run over yesterday. I guess it's the Chiefs and they're a good team. But the 49ers, here we are. Every year you think that they're going to take off, they're three and four. They're looking to get right against the Rams this weekend. Uh, a team that, you know, if you said to them, who do you want to play to get right? Uh, we'll take the Rams. And that's exactly what they're getting. The Rams, who do you need to get right? Anybody but the 49ers, right? Well, the 49ers are coming to town. The NFC West uh, coming out of the bye for the Rams. The NFC at large coming out of the bye for the Rams is absolutely all over the map. All right, coming up next, I want to talk about that price for Christian McCaffrey to go to San Francisco. Were the Rams in on it, and could they have backdoored themselves some good luck? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. All right, pretty excited to talk to you about a new partner of ours, Prediction Strike. It is the world's first sports stock market. You can now invest in professional athletes just like you do in stocks. It's a lower risk alternative to betting on sports, and the athlete prices move based on performance and supply and demand. So, can you identify that undervalued player that nobody else has? Can you jump on that? Can you say, that guy's coming for a fall? Get on that one and get out of it before. That's how you do it. For instance, if you would have invested in Jalen Hurts a year ago, you're up over 48%. Maybe you're thinking Kyle Pitts was ready for a fall. You would have been right about that. He's down over 44% after struggling to start the year. And, of course, imagine our guy, Allen Robinson. What do you think that was at the beginning of the year to where it is right now, right? All athletes benefit as well. They're entitled to a percentage of their market cap. That's unlike some other sports betting companies. Two and a half percent trade fees. That's the lowest in real money sports. Download the Prediction Strike app. Use the code Locked On for a free share when you sign up and make a first deposit of $20 or more. That's promo code LOCKED for a special one-time giveaway. Prediction Strike will choose one person who signs up with the code LOCKED and makes a deposit to win 100 free random shares. That could be worth up to $3,000 and you get lucky and receive Josh Allen shares. Invest in what you know on Prediction Strike, the stock market for sports. 
So are you thinking about taking the plunge, popping the question, right? The, uh, the moment that you're going to ask that question, right? You want to make it sparkle and Blue Nile can help you make your celebration even more memorable. As the original online jeweler, Blue Nile offers the largest selection of independently graded diamonds and pieces of, and pieces I should say, are priced significantly below traditional retailers. Blue Nile has helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring. Their easy online tools let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. And Blue Nile's bench jewelers will help you handcraft her perfect one-of-a-kind engagement. Maybe you don't know exactly what it is you're looking for. Blue Nile can help you as well. They have jewelry experts on hand 24-7 available your phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every single budget. Shop stress-free with Blue Nile's 100% satisfaction guaranteed. And all Blue Nile orders, orders, I should say, are insured and shipped for free in discreet packaging. You will not spoil that surprise. So make your moment sparkle with Blue Nile. Go to BlueNile.com. Use the promo code Locked On to save $50 on your purchase of $500 or more. That's B-L-U-E-N-I-L-E. BlueNile.com. Your code is Locked On to save $50 on your purchase of $500 or more. BlueNile.com. Code Locked On. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every day. Now, for your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So, one of the things when you see a a trade go down, whether it's your team making it or a team in your division making it or the team that you're chasing, whatever it might be, what was the price? And what would, where would it have left you if you would have had to make a similar um, offer? So according to reports, Peter Schrager has mentioned this. Uh, Peter King has mentioned this as well. Um, the Rams were very, very interested in, in Christian McCaffrey. Now, we know that McCaffrey ultimately ends up in San Francisco with the Niners. And the price was a second, third, fourth, and fifth round draft pick the following year. So two, three, and four for this upcoming draft. That would be the 2023 draft. And then in the 2024 draft, They threw in a fifth rounder. Apparently, the Rams couldn't get there because mostly because they don't have a fourth round pick next year, Um, and but they were willing to give up their second, third, and fifth round picks to get it done. Ultimately, obviously, the Niners took the one with the additional pick in the fourth round, and Christian McCaffrey is now up north with the Niners. I don't hate this. I look Christian McCaffrey's a nice player. Very injury prone, has not been able to stay on the field for any extended period of time. So we'll see what that looks like uh, very, very soon when the Niners come here on Sunday to take on the Rams. We'll see whether or not they hook up against each other in the playoffs like they did last year. Certainly a possibility as well. But I don't know if the Rams not being able to get that deal done wasn't in their best interest. Does it feel like the Rams are a McCaffrey away from being a Super Bowl contender again? It doesn't to me. McCaffrey would help, but you'd still have to have all the other things click into place, right? Your O-line has to get a lot better. You've got to get a lot healthier, right? You're going to have to have Allen Robinson step up more regularly. You're going to need to get Van Jefferson back. You're going to need to have Matthew Stafford play a lot better. You're going to need to get additional pressure on the quarterback from somebody not named Aaron Donald. These are all things that have to happen, even if you had McCaffrey. So why not just not have McCaffrey, hope those other things happen, and hope that what you have is good enough. And, oh, by the way, the Rams are going to need to draft some people. I, I, I love the F them picks ethos. I love the idea of being hyper-aggressive when you think you're close. But you got to be close. If you are five players away, I'm just making something up, spending four picks to go get one guy doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If you're one guy away, take a shot, see what happens. But it feels like the Rams are more than one guy away. It feels like uh, San Francisco is more than one guy away. So now all of a sudden, they're going to be a little bit less, um, uh, what's the word I want? They, they, They won't have as many options in the draft coming forward where the Rams for the first time in a while will. The Rams are going to have to draft offensive linemen. The Rams are going to have to find a pass rusher. The Rams are going to have to find some players in the draft, uh, presumably a little bit higher than they've been picking uh, previously, to fill in some of these holes that they have. So we'll see what Christian McCaffrey brings to San Francisco. We'll see if, you know, whether uh, Kyron Williams can kind of pick up the space, uh, the slack in in the backfield, whether Daryl Henderson can find a little bit of mojo. I don't know if any of those things will happen. But neither, like we just talked about in the previous segment, 
the NFC is such a weird conference this year. I don't know if anybody other than maybe Philly, maybe Dallas with that defense has much of an advantage right now. It's going to come down to who gets in, and you're going to have a bunch of teams between eight, nine, and ten wins. And then if you get in, are you hot? Do you make a play? Can you can can you survive the moment the way that the Rams did multiple times last year? That feels like a much more likely path to me moving forward than making a big swing, trying to get something done, trying to get one trade, and then going into the draft saying, well, we don't pick until day three again. They're going to have to pick some guys, and this feels like an opportunity missed that's actually a very, very good result. We'll see how it all shakes out, but I do not I do not hate the fact that McCaffrey is in San Francisco and that the Rams still have their picks. Now, maybe they'll go get somebody else. Maybe they'll go pick up a, a, an edge rush. Maybe they'll try to make some depth on the offensive line to try to fill in some of those holes, but running back does not seem to be the hole that they need to address first, and I like that they didn't go all in on that one. Okay. Can you get to 10 wins if you're the Rams? Can you get to that magic number, that double digits that feels like a very likely spot to get into the postseason? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. Have you tried prize picks yet? You got to try it. It's super, super fun. It is a great way to do your daily fantasy football. Um, You got to make picks, right? You got to make your entries. You got to make your decisions based on what you know as a football fan. Do you, you know, we all do the over-unders, right? But how about over-unders on some specific numbers? Patrick Mahomes, over-under 320. Derrick Henry, more or less than 85 yards. Cooper Cup, half a touchdown. Make your picks. It's super easy to play. It's a great way to enjoy a Sunday afternoon, maybe a Monday night like for tonight. I'm just saying, you pick two to five players, and if they go, or they score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. And you don't have to beat a million other people or five other people or 10 other people. It's just you against the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on all the sports that you love, NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, PGA, college football, basketball, you name it, it's out there. It's safe and it's fast to withdraw your money and it's currently operational in over 30 states. Here's how you do it. Download the prize picks app. Or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. And if you deposit 100, prize picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, prize picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. My name is Travis Rogers. Thanks for making us a part of what you do. All right. So the Rams are coming off of their bye right now. The Rams are getting ready uh, to play 11 consecutive weekends. They are at three and three. Ten feels like the magic number, right? If you can get to ten, I think that you have a chance to win the division. I think that you have a chance to get in as a wild card. So to get to 10, they got to go seven and four over their last remaining games. Not as easy as you might think. However, it feels like it's gotten maybe more possible than it did maybe a week or two ago. Certainly um, after the first couple of weeks of the season where it looked like the Rams were really going to struggle because of what was left on their schedule. But here's what it is. Let's just kind of go through these and see what they might end up with. San Francisco coming up on Sunday. I hate to say it. That feels like a loss. That that feels like a loss for no other reason than it's always a loss other than in the NFC Championship game. The Niners beat them with exactly – they come in, they push the Rams around, they, they slow the game down, they don't let the Rams get going offensively, they'll pop a big play to Debo, they'll pop a big play to George Kittle, or so maybe it's McCaffrey this time, and the Rams can't get anything going. Matthew Stafford throws a pick six, and now the Rams are three and four. I hate that that's likely to happen, but it feels like that's likely to happen. So there's three and four. At Tampa, that one feels – eminently winnable right now so let's give the rams a a win there at four and four arizona automatic win for the rams right yeah i say with my fingers crossed and i'm rolling my eyes but i think that they win that game it's at sofi it's a team that they've dominated we'll go to five and four there at new orleans okay new orleans is all over the map they have terrible quarterback play in dalton and Jameis winston and and Taysom hill sometimes is in there but it's in new orleans it's a very tough place to play Let's put that one aside for a second. So the Rams are still five and four. We're going to skip ahead. At Kansas City is a loss, five and five. Seattle at home, okay? I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you one of each in Seattle. They're going to split with the Seattle. Seahawks are good this year, right? Or at least surprisingly so. That brings us to six and six with those two Seattle games. 
at Green Bay, okay? Or let's hold on, I jumped ahead. Vegas. I think they'll beat the Raiders because the Raiders find a way to lose games. It's a short week. The Rams are at home. The Raiders have lose an additional day right there. So I'm going to give them uh, uh, the nod, gives them the seven and six after the Raiders at Green Bay. Now it's going to be cold. It's December 19th, but they'll have had the long week. Hopefully they're a little more healthy. Now Green Bay could be in one or two. They could be totally out of it by that point. They could be in full give up mode or they could be fighting for their playoff lives. I'm going to say that's a loss. We're at seven and seven. Now, here's what it comes down to. You've got Denver on Christmas Day, eight and seven. Okay, now we're here we go. Two games left. One is at SoFi, but you're the road team against Los Angeles. Okay, against the Chargers. Let's give it to the Rams. Let's say that they win that game because for no other reason than the Chargers seem to always find a way to lose games that they need to win. Let's give that one to the Rams. Now you're nine and seven. Okay. Let's go back to that New Orleans game. Let's go back to that game and think about whether or not we think the Rams can go in. Now they've had some decent success there. They've also gotten housed there a few times along the way. Um, who knows who their quarterback's going to be? Who knows how healthy you are? But this season, may turn on whether or not they can go in and beat a New Orleans team that is at best average and quite possibly bad. And that could be the season. Now it's coming up early because, you know, who knows how any of this stuff plays out, right? But those other ones feel like they're going to lose in Kansas City. They're going to lose to San Francisco. Um, Green Bay, in Green Bay, it's probably going to lose for all the reasons that we mentioned. It could come down to one that you say, I don't know, man. It could go either way at New Orleans, coming up in just a few weeks. That's what's so scary about this schedule. You're talking about that New Orleans game, which is November 20th, less than a month away. That could be the entire season. Ten feels like you're in. Nine, you cross your fingers and hope. Ten might win the division, seeing what everybody's done. Maybe you grab that second Seattle game. Maybe you drop the Arizona game. These things all tend to even out. Ten's the number. The Rams have got to get to 10. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Of course, you want to follow me on Twitter at Travis Rogers. Don't forget, you're going to want to make your second listen, the Locked on Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on Odyssey, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.